This is the phenomenal Mercedes-AMG GTR Pro. You know what, Mercedes initially said they weren't even gonna bring this to the country, but we're glad they did, because at Performance Car of the Year, it created a real splash. Everybody knew this car would be great on track, but could it cut it on road? That's what we needed to find out. And this is the Porsche 911 Turbo S. It has all wheel drive, and it's the quickest car motor has ever performance tested. It'll go from naught to beyond the national speed limit in two and a half seconds. Plus, it's a Porsche, and we all know how well they go at Motor Performance Car of the Year. Surprised to see the Mercedes AMG A45S here in the finals? Well, don't be. With 310 kilowatts, the capacity to send all that power to the rear treads and the ability to smoke some serious names on track, this might be the most complete hot hatch in the world. Welcome to Motor Performance Car of the Year. Thanks for tuning in to the 2021 Motor Performance Car of the Year Award. Power, performance, and the prestige of one ultimate winner is what defines this award. However, what defines Motor is that we exist purely for our subscribers and readers that month in, month out, make a conscious decision to pay for independent Australian automotive journalism. Motor is written by Australian motoring enthusiasts, with the exception of our esteemed editor, of course, for you, Australian motoring enthusiasts. Without your trust and support, we would not exist. While today is an award for a car, this is an award for you, our readers, as we create content for current and future generations of Australian car lovers. On with the awards, over to you, Alex. Thanks, Beach. Okay, Andy, let's talk about the cars a little bit and also how you go about picking a winner. Now, we've got the top three behind us, but this year's field was bigger than this, wasn't it? Yes, we had 10 cars at Performance Car of the Year this year, and it was everything from a Fiesta ST hatch through supercars and right up to a 580 kilowatt tuned Mustang. It's yes. a blast. <laughs> wow, okay, so a really disparate group. How do you pick a winner from that? Well, we judge the cars not against each other at Performance Car of the Year, but against a set of criteria. There's a road element and a track element. Mm. And the two big ones there are performance and dynamics, the old go, stop and steer. Yeah, okay, so they're need... the key categories. Yeah. After that, it's accessibility. It's reward versus effort. How easily does a car give up the good stuff to you? Beyond that, it's livability. We are motor, but we do care about if a car is too noisy, if it rides terribly, if it has awful ergonomics. Yeah, this is the stuff you're going to notice every day. Yeah, you don't want a car to annoy you. And then there's value, how much the car costs, what are the price of options, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And the final one is X factor. You know, do you walk away from the car and look over your shoulder at it when you walk away? Yeah, does the car get under your skin? Yeah, do you just get out of that car after driving a, I want one of these? Okay, so there's a really rigid criteria to picking a winner. This is our top three. Let's get in there and have a closer look at them. Okay, our first finalist, which is the AMG GTR Pro. And Andy, I mean, look at this thing. It's an absolute beast, isn't it? It is. It's not short of presence. One of the criteria for judging performance car of the year is X Factor. And this thing goes to 11. <laughs> it sure does. But what is a GTR Pro? Because it's that Pro bit that is significant here, isn't it? Yeah, Mercedes already sells the AMG GTR. And this Pro model, it's much more focused. It doesn't have any more power. It's still 430 kilowatts and 700 newton meters, but it's just much, much more focused for especially track use. So what's underneath that enormous bonnet? 
Well, you've got a four litre V8 under there. Twin turbos. Twin turbos, yep. Hot in V, they call that engine. It's a, it's a really special engine. It's a very, very charismatic engine. But the really clever thing about this car is the suspension. Mm. Um, there are all sorts of very ingenious very nerdy things yes. going on I could there. I could nerd out about this all day talk, <laughs> talk about roll centers and roll moments and what they've done to the steering to cater for that and anti-dive but the thing that encapsulates this car's ability more than anything else is the fact that in performance car of the year this was only the fifth most powerful car it's mm. a midfielder yet it was by far the quickest around Winton it set a production car lap record of 129.3 it just blew everything else away. Yeah, that's incredible. So the lap time is phenomenal. The fastest production car ever to lap your test track. Yeah. What's it like when you're in the hot seat when all that's unfolding in front of you? Well, it's so natural to drive. You have to key into the steering a little bit because the steering is variable rate, very, very sharp, very, very quick. Mm. But once, once you've grown into that, it's a car that you just want to throw around like a big Lotus Elise. It's phenomenal. You just want to go faster and faster all the time. And it corners so flat. Because it corners so flat, all of the aero that you can see on the front of the car, the active aero and the big spoiler on the back, it, it all works perfectly. And it develops 99 kilograms of downforce more than the GTR. It's just a phenomenal thing to drive on track. You can get the power down so early and it telegraphs what it's doing. You can smear it out of corners and it's just a delight. Mm, Carl lovely. Reindler, our supercar V8 driver, he got out of the car at the end of driving three or four laps. We were asking him for his feedback on the car and he just looked like a guppy. He just went, <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Okay, but we should point out at this point that the AMG GT itself, this model of car, it's not new. It's been around for a little while and in yeah. Motors' backlog, it's kind of been an almost their car. It's been excellent in a few key areas, but it's never really got to that top echelon. So why is this one now a finalist? It's that incremental development. Um, with this car, more than any other that AMG have produced, it almost feels like it's got that demented focus that have driven the company to seven consecutive Formula One titles. That depth mm. of engineering is within this car. Even on the road, it is fantastically composed. You'd expect that suspension to be really firm. Yeah, you but would. I think it's the best riding of all of the AMG GT models. And they've just improved it incrementally, year on year on year. And they've come to this point, and it's... It's a brilliant car on both road and track. Okay, interesting. So maybe this is a car that is more than the sum of its parts. Let's move on to our next finalist. Okay, Andy, on to our second finalist, Porsche 911 Turbo S. Now, for the people playing at home, if I was a betting man, before testing had even begun, this is probably the car that I would put some money on because Porsche's record at Motor Performance Car of the Year is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's just phenomenal. This is the 25th running of Motor's Performance Car of the Year, and Porsche have won it 15 times. <laughs> so it's a bit of a slam dunk for Porsche in the past, but this one is very, very special indeed. And as Alex has said, if you were betting, you'd bet on this. Yeah, so it's got everything to lose in some ways. And, you know, the people at home might look at this car and go, hang on, it looks like every other 911 for the last... 50, 60 years, but this is an all new generation Turbo S, isn't it? Yeah, it's more powerful. It's a much slicker thing. It's got 478 kilowatts, 800 Newton meters. It's phenomenal. It's four wheel drive, a 3.8 liter twin turbo engine in it. And when you accelerate this thing off the line, it feels like you've been smashed by a wrecking ball. <laughs> Nought to 100 in two and a half seconds. What's the nought to 200 time? 8.46. We, wow. uh, we had a Ferrari 488 GTB at performance car of the year a couple of years ago and that was almost a second slow we didn't think that thing was ever going to be beaten but this is just another league altogether so what does that feel like for the people playing at home when you're sitting in a car you've got a turbo s on launch control what happens what does it feel like well it's surprisingly undramatic because it just does it again and again and again and that's what you're paying for that depth of engineering from porsche so you just sit there the revs climb up to about 5,000 RPM and you go. And it's that surge of power, that push in the back that you get from an electric car. If you've ever accelerated a Tesla at full speed, <laughs> that's what it's like. But you've got those engines out, so it's even more exciting. Okay, so it's ferociously fast. What's it like around the track? It's very, very rapid. This was expected to be the quickest car, but it came mm. second. Um, but it is primarily a road car. That's right. 
uh, we've got to remember this. Porsche builds the GT2 and the GT3 models if you're an absolute track day fiend. And the turbo has always been a little bit softer edge. So perhaps we can forgive it for not being the absolute knife around the track that mm. some were expecting. OK, so it's really fast at the racetrack, but what's it like on the road? It's excellent. It's a Porsche 911 Turbo. They've always been very, very good road cars. If you want a full-on race experience, you buy a GT2 or a GT3, the 911 Turbo can do everything. It's, it's refined, it's comfortable, it doesn't tramline all over the place like a lot of high-end sports cars yeah, do with big right. tyres. And rear seats. Yep, you can throw your shopping in there or you can put friends in there if they don't have legs. But, <laughs> it's kind but, of a kid-friendly zone, that one, yeah, isn't it? Just. Yeah. But uh, there is an element of practicality to it, and that's what people like about 911s, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So ferociously fast, nice and practical. It's the king of the 911 tree. But speaking of really, really quick cars, let's move on to our third finalist, Mercedes-AMG A45. Mercedes AMG A45S. Now, Andy, this is obviously a hot hatch, but perhaps not quite in the way that people at home might be expecting. No, time was when 200 kilowatts meant an absolute monster of a hot hatch. This thing's got 310. It's bonkers. It's bonkers. From a two litre petrol engine with an enormous turbocharger on it. I know, and, and that is normally the recipe for a horrible drive, loads of turbo lag, but I don't know how, but the engineers are faulted back have made it work. It just drives like a bigger engine. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Also incredible is the price tag. It's a hot hatch, but yeah. $100,000, isn't it? Yeah, 93, but with options, yeah, 100, and people are used to paying 50 grand in this hot hatch sphere. But what this thing can do is next level on again. It moves the game. So lots of money, lots of performance. Andy, what is it like when you put it around a racetrack? It's really well-mannered. Back in 2011, at Performance Car of the Year, we bought cars like the Lamborghini Gallardo Balboni, the Porsche 997 GT3 RS, and you know what? This thing would have smoked all of them <laughs> um, on a lap time and in a straight line. It's phenomenal. It's really quick. It's very composed. It can send up to 100% of its drive to the rear axle, so it can feel rear-driven. You can drift this thing, yeah. which is not what you expect of a hot hatch, is it's it? It's not, because a four-wheel drive, obviously, lots of power. You kind of expect this thing to be really grippy and really fast, but it's actually lots of fun. It moves around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was queuing up for this thing in the pits to take out. It's a whole lot of fun on track, and it's so loud. It's so much fun. It's so visceral. Mm. Yeah, you can have a great, great time in this thing. On track, it was quicker on a lap, and it was quicker in a straight line than 173 grand's worth of Cayman GTS 4 litre, which is a serious performance car, this thing. Wow, OK. Now, drift mode. Let's talk about drift mode, because this car has it. So does that mean it's effectively a rear-wheel drive hatchback? You can power oversteer this thing? Yes, it's a, it's a little bit strange. It feels a little bit artificial. It can send 100% drive to the rears. But it, in most cars, when they start sliding, you try and correct out of it. In this one, it almost wants you to tug it in and add more. Mm. Um, so it can feel a little bit artificial like that. It's not the purity you expect of a, a pure rear-wheel drive car. Yeah, you've got to retrain your brain a little yeah, bit, don't you? Yeah, but it's still a lot of fun. And, and the fact it can do it just warps your brain, really. Yeah. But this is a hot hatch. It should be all things to all people. So what's it like when you're just tooling around town or you want to go for a windy country road blat? Well, obviously, you've got the practicality. You've got four seats. It's easy to drive. You can switch it into a comfort mode and it's a bit quieter. Mm. It's still not the quietest of all <laughs> hot hatches, but get it on a good road and it is phenomenally composed. And it's got a level of compliance that the old A45 just never had. It didn't. The old A45 was really fast as yep. well, but on a bumpy road, it almost beat you up. It was yeah, that firm. Yeah. It was like a trolley jack, wasn't it? It was, but this car, much more compliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's what makes it so usable in the real world, that it's quick, but it's comfortable. So we've got some very expensive performance cars yeah, yeah, at yeah. this year's competition, and at 93 grand, this one is relatively attainable. Okay, so there we have it. Three amazing cars, three very different cars. Let's get to it and announce the winner. So we have our top three. Congratulations to both manufacturers for making it this far. But Andy, we're not here to hand out trophies for second or third place. Nope. We're here to announce the winner. It's what everyone at home is waiting for. Over to you, mate. The winner of Motors Performance Car of the Year 2021 
is the Mercedes AMG GTR Pro. Wow, okay. Surprise verdict. I'll freely admit I was not expecting that. Absolutely, it's not a Porsche. And uh, <laughs> it's the first time in 25 years of running Motors Picotti that a Mercedes-Benz has won. So that's huge. Yeah, congrats Mercedes-AMG. We've actually got our trusty gaffer Chris in the car now. So come on, mate, bring the car up. Okay, Andy, the first thing that I want to know is why did this car win? This year's field was the fastest, the most powerful in motor performance car history. What set the AMG apart? Well, it just aced the criteria. It was the most engaging car. It's the quickest car on a lap and it was the most fun. You know, the word we kept coming back to with this car was serious. It just seemed to elevate driver engagement onto a completely different plane to anything yeah. there. But at the same time, it was just a ball to drive. <laughs> it's a really focused thing. Would it be fair to say that after years of trying, this is the car that finally unlocks the full potential of the AMG GT? Absolutely. The AMG GT was always there or thereabouts. It was a great car, but this just takes it on to a next level. Okay, we should finish by saying that if people want to read more about Motor Performance Car of the Year, pick up our latest magazine or head to our website, whichcar.com.au. And finally, I'd like to say thanks to all of Motor's readers without whom none of this would be possible.